Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that recently moved to Paris to start its own KISS tribute band, French KISS. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Storm Vault from Warhammer. Or two to five players work together in order to defeat the forces of chaos by gathering enough gateway shards. The game board is a map of uh, various locations in this fantasy universe. You also have various portals through which the, the chaos uh, enemies will come through, and then you also have places where your heroes will materialize as well. Now, along the side of the game board, you have various uh, spaces for cards, and these cards correspond to locations on the board. That's right, you're searching around the board to find those gateway shards that you can take to the Storm Vault location in order to win the game. Now, on a player's turn, you have different phases. First of all, you have the Storm Strike phase. Essentially, if you're in the Azure, which is kind of where you begin, you can essentially transport yourself to one of the kind of locations on the board where you materialize. If there is an enemy there, you can go ahead and fight them. Next, you have the Chaos Activation Phase. Essentially, you draw a Chaos card. It's going to say uh, where new Chaos monsters come out, how they move, and the board actually will indicate kind of the pathways along which they will move, and the cards will tell you kind of how far they're going to move. Finally, you have the Hero Activation. Now, you're going to roll a D6, and that's going to tell you essentially how many points you have, not just to move, but you may be able to activate yourself to fight a monster in a location that you're already at. So you're going to spend these to move and to fight, essentially. Now, as you're moving around, eventually you'll come to these locations, and whatever location you're on, you can explore, meaning you can grab the card, and that card, as I say, it may be a gateway shard that you need, or it may be some other item or quest or thing you need uh, to help you along on your journey. And you can also discard hero tokens you get from combat uh, and, and other things. You can discard that to get an Age of Sigmar. Essentially, you can go through the discard pile uh, of, of the, uh, the, que the cards that are around the board, and you can, find, uh, you can, you can get uh, cards that way as well. Now, for combat, essentially you're just going to roll a, a dice, but this dice has different symbols on it. It's going to have a, uh, a essentially a hit symbol, meaning you hit your enemy, uh, and then you're, there's going to be some blank sides. Now, I think there's only one side. If it comes up, it means essentially you are defeated. And if you are defeated, you return to the Azure. Uh, there's some consequences there, but when you rematerialize, you're going to advance the Reforge track once uh, to be reforged. And if you do that, that's going to make things dicier for you and your friends. Now, the game ends in a few different ways here. First of all, uh, depending on the level you're playing, there may be different different ways that you can lose. The basic way to lose is if the uh, Chaos card deck, if that runs out, if you've got to draw one and there's not one left to draw, you lose the game. If you go ahead and, and in the next level up, if you get the um, uh, Reforge track all the way to zero, you can't Reforge again, heroes can't come back, you lose the game. And then, of course, finally, uh, there is, in the highest scenario, if you ever have, I think, like six of the different enemies uh, of Chaos on the board at the same time, then you lose the game. So you have to keep fighting them. Heroes win the game if they can collect three shard tokens from around the board, if they can take those uh, tokens to the Storm Vault, place them in the three shard uh, gateway shard locations. If they can do that, then the players collectively win the game of Storm Vault. So that's just the, the bare overview of the game. There's not a lot more to it, but there's, there's a few other little rules here and there. But essentially, the game superficially looks a lot like a game that came out a couple of years ago from this company called Quest to Mount Doom, Lord of the Rings Quest to Mount Doom. And it was in the sense that you were going around looking for the one ring. And it was kind of a take that game. You played dirty tricks on the other players. You were the fellowship, but it wasn't cooperative. You were at each other's throat the whole game, but it was actually pretty fun. So I was kind of excited to take a look at Storm Vault. Storm Vault is cooperative, so I'm thinking maybe it's the same game, you know, kind of a reskin of the same game, but maybe a few other little you know tweaks to, to make it more cooperative. 
So I was really kind of excited to to sit down and play this game. Um, I like the Warhammer universe. I'm more like the, the 40K as opposed to the Fantasy Warhammer, but I think it's all fun. Now, first of all, too, this is a game you've got to assemble the pieces. You've got to snap together the pieces. I'm not a fan of that. I don't like doing that. Um, you know, I mean, they look great and they're fun to play with. I just wish they came already assembled. That's I know some people get a kick out of doing that and some people paint them. I don't. Um, but it is what it is. Um, so my friends and I are playing this game and, you know, it's, it's uh, to be blunt, a ton of chance. It's kind of basically a roll and move game with the die. There's, there's, you know, it says like you can initiate combats already in your space with the with, with a die point, which I don't know, kind of seems weird. The way they've got that structure just kind of seems weird in the rule books. Um, but essentially, you are rolling and moving, which, and you don't have to go, of course, the full distance that you roll, but you ha you can go up to that. So it, it, that's just kind of weird. Um, it seems there be a, there there could be a better way to to uh, to, to do movement. Um, but also, too, it's, there's a lot of chance with combat because, as I say, you just roll a die. I, I want to say, like, the majority of, of the time you're you're going to hit and kill the guy. But it's literally you roll and you take a chance, maybe a one in six chance every time you roll of you being just killed. And there's no real way you can mitigate that. I mean, some of the card effects, I guess I guess kind of can, I think, but but not really. There's there's no real mitigation of that die roll. It's just brutal. Every time you roll that die, you're sweating. So what that means is you get a series of bad rolls, that reforge track just goes down, and that's game. So I was really kind of disappointed in that aspect of the game, just how much chance there are. Now, it is fun, this idea of the hunt, and you're, you're going around, you're trying to hunt, but at the same time, you got to stay on top of those monsters. You don't want to get too mo many monsters out there. So you got to be on top of that, um, but you, you're, you're trying to find it, and there's that element of, of fun and exploring and, and finding the cards and that elation when you find the shards. And, <clears throat> and, 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 and I like that aspect of the game a lot. But the chance in it is just so overwhelming. Um, I, I didn't hate this game... Uh, neither did my friends. We had fun with it. We liked it, but we weren't wowed by it. That that too much chance kind of killed this from becoming a really good game. As it is, it's an enjoyable game, but I don't know that it's one you necessarily need on your shelf. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say try it before you buy it. Um, it's good, but it's not great. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope I see you all at Ace Freely Con in May 2020, if there is such a thing. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me. Destruction! Molten lava burning people up, then 